The road to Sonic the Hedgehog is long. Yeah. Okay, so... I don't know if the footage was saved or not, um, but we tried to do Sonic Adventure 2, and every time the level would load up, the, the fucking thing would crash. Mm -hmm. Because whatever reason, the Steam port is one of the shittiest ports I've ever seen in my life. Because Sega is amazing. Yeah. So then we decide, you know what, fuck it, we'll just play Sonic Generations, because it's, it's slightly better than Sonic Adventure 2. Yep. Um, and for whatever reason, every other PC game I own will just open onto the correct monitor. Uh, fucking Sega games, you need to tell it exactly which monitor you want it to open on. <laughs> because there are special little snowflakes like that. Yep. And since I rarely have to open my monitors that way, I mean, my, open my games that way, I forget which monitor is which. So then, uh... It decides, alright, I'm gonna open on the smaller monitor. Well, fuck. Then I open it on the correct monitor, and uh, Bandicam decides it's not gonna recognize it as a game. And so I had to fix that, and je Jesus fuck. I hope everyone listening actually cares about our gripes. Nah. <laughs> well, it's just yet another thing wrong with Sonic. Yep, um, true. Even though this is one of the better Sonic games in like the last 10 years. Yeah. Mostly because it tries to bank on nostalgia. Yeah. Which is fine. Fucking let it. At least they're doing something, like, and not trying to redo everything. Yeah, because we all know what happens when Sonic tries to redo everything. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, one of the things I want to talk about with Sonic Adventure 02 is kind of the beginning of the end, which is how I view Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. Because it still has some good things going on, but... It's also where a lot of the problems really start. Mm. You see a hint of it in Sonic Adventure 1, but it really comes into its own in 2. Like, you have Rouge and Shadow who are problems in their own right. Uh-huh. Like... Shadow being the love interest for Sonic, right? Yes. And then eventually getting in a love triangle. Yeah. Um... You know, with Knuckles and Tails and Amy. Uh, I think it was actually the robot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, th there's so much. And fucking chip. chip. <laughs> ah, good cry, Sonic Cannon. Yep. Um, and you have Rouge, and you have all this other bullshit that comes into it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if we sound tired, it's because we're we're we fucked around with this for so long. Yep. Um, but here's Sonic Generations, where. They decided to make the difference between old Sonic design and new Sonic design a canon thing. Mm -hmm. And introduce this thing! Yeah, which nobody cares about. And somehow I'm guessing it has a name, but nobody knows it. Yeah, it, it's one of those. Yep. So the only reason we're doing Sonic right now, so shortly after having done another Sonic, is because we wanted to talk more about furry shit, and we needed something that was mindless so we could actually do so. Pretty much. We were trying to do Cave Story, and there was just, there was too much to think about. Yeah, we, we can't talk furry in Cave Story. Yeah. Meanwhile, this, we can ignore it and yeah. just run through it. Pretty pointless. Yeah. I do enjoy that Modern Sonic made the whole chili dog thing canon. Uh-huh. Oh my god. Yeah. Happy birthday, Sonic. Hope you like this. Like it? I love it. I wonder if they had to do that from a backward angle so they wouldn't actually show the chili dog just kind of disappearing as he closed his mouth. Yeah, changing models too difficult for yep. Sonic team. Pretty much. Time and space, we're getting ripped asunder? Eh, whatever, where the fuck's my chili dog? Uh huh. Probably all he cares about. Yeah. Well, to be fair, at this point with Sonic, it's like, oh good, another thing is threatening the world. I'm just gonna punch it and it's gonna go away. Yeah, pretty much. I feel like Sonic's attitude is what Superman's attitude should be at this point. Mm hmm. So why is Sonic not being sucked up? Uh. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then it turns out that they all were just disintegrated. Nah, yeah. they're all dead. Yep. Oh, he has five fingers. Interesting. That's kind of the retcon I want. Like, you want to restart a franchise? Murder everyone. Yeah. That's why I give props to the, the first Transformers movie, the 1985 animated one. Oh, yeah. 
Because, like, we want a new toy line. How do we explain none of the old characters being in this? Oh, they all die in a war. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> Let's have a bunch die off screen and you only see their corpses. Yeah, they've been here since episode one. What the fuck ever. Mm -hmm. They're dead now. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. All of Sonic's Woodland's friends have been disintegrated. Whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, that would be a good reboot. Yeah, new batch of characters for people to draw creepy porn of. Yeah, true. Pew! Pew! Wow, you're so fast. What? <laughs> I'm so fast, I can break the sound barrier standing still. Look, at, No, I think you're breaking the light barrier. Look at that. <laughs> All right. All right, moving Move on. on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta slow down. Yeah, the sonic way, slow it down. Exactly. All right. So this is the gimmick of this. They have every uh, major level as old style and new style. Yep. Where you have to, you know, do, you do the runner and then do the run and bump from the. Boop, boop, yep. Boop, 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 boop. The cool thing is they give you one level from each of the games, and it's the most iconic level from each. Yeah. Um, for some reason, they acknowledge the existence of Sonic 06. Okay. But you know, whatever. It's one of the. Halfway... No, I'm not even going to say that. I was going to say one of the halfway decent levels from that game, but there are none. Mm. That game is a train wreck from start to finish. <laughs> but it's so fun to talk about. It's fun because it's an amusing train wreck. I wonder. Yep. Can you... No, it's oh. not. Oh, they learned their mistake. Yep, that's good. They learned. Mm -hmm. I think they saw the gifts online. Yeah, probably. It's like, okay, that's just embarrassing. I do like this remix of the, uh, what is it, Angel Island? Uh, Green Hill Zone. Oh, Green Hill Zone, Woo! right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right, Angel Island was Sonic 3. Yeah, they do have an Angel Island Zone in this uh, game. Well, um, that's silly, because it's basically Green Hill Zone. Yeah, they remix it. Okay. Ooh. Well, I'm not talking about the, the, um... Music. I'm saying that the level is basically the same thing. Oh no, they remix the level too. Oh, okay. They remix everything. Alright. That's just how this game works. Woo! Yeah, remix is usually associated with music, which is why I was a little confused there. Yeah. Retool might be a better word. Yeah, but people use remix. I guess, yeah. Woo! And this is... I don't know why it slows down for that. Because the can. I guess. It wants to look cool. And so it 300s everything. Yeah. Zack Schneider's it. Yeah. Jack Schneider. He is a staple. Oh, Ron yeah. Schneider. Ooh, 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 ooh. Zack Schneider, but whatever. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Nope. Another one of those. Because, yeah. hey, do you remember the, the killer whale? Well, here's a big robot fish. Bitch. <laughs> whatever. Yep. All pre-scripted and shit. Oh yeah. Woo. Cannot consume. Woo. Yeah. Yep. Slide. Okay. Okay. Why not? Sure. Maybe it was a trick of the camera. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Before we uh, started doing this, the reason we decided Sonic stuff, we were talking about like furry politics and things like that. Yeah, the weirdness that goes on there. We're not going to get into details and, like, naming names and shit like that, but we'd kind of like to talk about just the general dynamic of furry politics and just things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, for those not to know, we're going to get right into it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're a furry, uh, there's pretty much four places, five places you can hang out. Yeah. Uh, there's... I forget how to slide. There's how you slide. There we go. Awesome. Amazing. Um, this is one of the better games. <laughs> Good job, Sonic. Um, FA is the big one. Yeah, uh, Infinity. Yeah, that's basically deviant art furry style. Mm-hmm. That's where most people hang out. That's the big one. That's where all the money is. Yeah. Um, there's... The other art sites, Ink Bunny, uh, So Furry, and Weasel. Yep. And then there's kind of F-List, if yeah. you're into, like, roleplay kind of stuff. Right. 
Um, there are furry communities here and there, pretty much everywhere on the internet, but those are like the big hangout spots. Right. Um, the trouble is, pretty much everyone on FA hates FA. Yeah, more or less. And that's more because of how it's run than anything else. It yeah, has it's a... not like the website's terrible or anything. No. Yeah. It's out of date and they're very slow to change. Mm-hmm. But FA is kind of like the World of Warcraft of the furry community, where everyone knows there are better options out there, but it's a matter of, we'll move when our friends move. Mm -hmm. So it's this weird reverse Mexican standoff where everyone is just kind of standing there waiting for someone else to do something. Yes. And every now and again, one or two people will move. Because some big drama comes up or something. Yeah. Um, either a big drama happens or they actually get banned. Uh-huh. Like, every now and again, someone will get banned, and half the time, it's not for a good reason. Yeah, and it's almost never somebody of high enough profile that they'll drag a bunch of watchers with them. Yeah. Like... Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Most of the time it's like, oh, I haven't seen somebody upload for more while. And then they check and like, oh, they've been banned. Yeah. Um. That might be a good place to check out. Yeah. Like, the only time there was ever a pretty sizable exodus was the move to Ink Bunny. Uh-huh. And that's more because, like, that one type of art got banned, and Ink Bunny's like, well, we allow it. And then everyone went over there. Yeah. And now that's Ink what... Ink Bunny is now known as that site. Yeah. And that's why no one else goes to Ink Bunny, because it's like, well, that's the place where the pedophiles hang out. Right. <laughs> um, oh. And then Weasel came out, and there was... There, Weasel was like the reveal of the segue, the it. Mm -hmm. Where everyone kind of hyped it up at first, and then it came out like, yeah, this is a fairly decent art site. And like any other site, there was uh, some issues at launch, but it was so hyped up that, you know people were disappointed with the, the regular launch issues. Yeah. Well, and not to mention, it's just kind of a pain in the butt, and there's you're going to have to wait a long time to get back the audiences that you have. So a lot of the people who went there from FA, um, they just couldn't get a hold on anything. Yeah. Which makes perfect sense. Like, I, I went to Weasel too, but I stayed on FA. I, I'm not one of those people who typically leaves because of drama because most of it just does not affect me um and it's not like i'm paying fa anything so i'm not really removing any business from their site by not being there um but like yeah a lot of people well a fair number of people have left for a while and then had to come back because there's just no money on any other furry website yeah See, to people not in the know on how some furs make a living being furry, yeah. uh, it's usually the artists, yeah. sometimes writers, um, but usually artists, and a big part of it is commission work. Right. And if not commission work, then you need advertisement for whatever project you're working on. Right. And it's just a matter of you need the audience, and the audience is on FA, so yeah. everyone sticks with FA. Yeah. And as much as they would want to go to another alternative, um, the audience just isn't there. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the FA staff know this, and that's why they get away with a lot of stuff they get away with. Yep. Um, it's like, yeah, you... It's like voting third party in an election. Yeah, it's, like, you, it's a really good analog for it. You can do it, and there's probably ones that will match your particular interests a lot better, mm -hmm. but not enough people are doing it. Right. So it's this horrible paradox of, well, I'll do it when other people do it, but that's never going to come true because... Everybody else is saying the exact same thing. Yeah, so if they all organized some ludicrous degree and all at the same time did it, mm -hmm. but, like, getting furries to organize anything is like herding cats. Right. Sometimes more literally than others. Yeah. Um. So, like, that that's not going to happen. I wish it was the other way around, but, like, yeah. Yep. And they're so furry, which has been around forever. It used to be known as Yif Star. Yeah. And to those not in the community, we no one uses Yif anymore. That was like a '90s thing. It's now it's just a joke. For yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Furries even us. Non furries alike. <laughs> yeah. Everyone thinks Yif is stupid. Yeah. Um, Probably why so furry changed its name. Yeah. They they changed their name. Pretty sure it's under the same management. Yeah, I think. I, I don't pay enough attention to really know. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, it's like, you, you need that audience. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I actually prefer Sofari to F.A. It's just that there's no audience there. Yeah. 
and, and the reason I prefer SoFurry over Weasel, which is a superior site on a technical level, is because SoFurry does not care what you upload at all. So, like, there's a lot of freedom there that just isn't on Weasel. Yeah. Like, they'll let you do things on Weasel, uh, for the most part, but it's just kind of looked down upon. They're like, eh, okay, I guess we can allow that. But, like, so furry, they're like, eh, whatever, do what you want. Which is kind of what drew me to the furry fandom in the first place. It's just, there's almost no judgment um, among most of the community, because everybody's into weird shit. Well, this is kind of why the furry community is great and terrible at the same time. Yes. Um, because it is such an online-only thing, and because... Uh, our main point of contact is the art sites. Mm -hmm. And because with pretty much all the art sites, porn is allowed, Yes. Um, everyone kind of wears their heart on their sleeve, as it were. Yes. Only it's more like they wear their erections on their sleeve. <laughs> yeah. And it's not that the, the community in general is more or less perverse than anyone else. It's right. just because of the nature of where we hang out, it's more obvious what people are into. Yeah, you're going to see a lot more of it. Yeah. Um, and I don't even think that's a bad thing. Like, no, not such a hang up on this stuff. Yeah. Um, but it now. There's this weird. Uh, I'm not even going to say a double standard. Because mm -hmm. there are some people that will judge you based on the things you're into. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. And there are thing, people who won't. And it's hard to tell who's in what camp sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, speaking as somebody who is who does hold something against some people, uh, it's hard to separate that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, especially when certain part, uh, certain factions in the community have worse reputations than others. Yeah, that's true. Um, and it's one of those things that because it's online, there's a lot of people that don't understand what's appropriate social behavior and what's not. Yeah, that's probably one of the things that gives for is their bad reputation. Yeah. It's kind of the vocal minority sort of deal. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because the, the vocal ones are the kids, more or less. Yeah. Or the people who just never learned. Right. Um, and oh, everybody damn. else is too mature to speak up, so you don't hear their voices. Yeah. You occasionally have people who are both vocal and sane. Yes. Um, I actually try to be that guy just to show that, yes, there are people like us out there. We just don't talk that much. Yeah. I think the the biggest vocal yet sane is probably Technicolor Pie. Yeah. A big shout out to Technicolor. We love you. Yeah, she's beautiful. Um, cause there there's a lot of stupid shit in the community. Like uh, any community, there's gonna be dumb dumb fucks. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of things that is like people don't see it from the perspective of the person doing it. Right. They only see it from their perspective and how it affects them. Right. Um, Which is kind of standard fare for just about everybody on the planet. Yeah, this is true. Uh, but I think the worst of it is with artists and commissions. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of stuff going around right now about pricing and the fairness of prices, and a lot of people are being very vocal that a lot of artists out there are upping their prices. Yeah, people don't understand how the economy works. Yeah. Um, well, the other thing is, there's this sense of... To those not in the furry community, art is a very central part of being a furry. Yeah, like the Artist Alley is enormous at various cons. Yeah. It's kind of one of those main areas. Well, it's because in a lot of other communities, having an original character is kind of, like, and a lot of times looked down upon, other times it's more neutrally seen. Yeah. While furry, it's kind of one of the central tenets. Well, you kind of have to. Um, I mean, it's not 100% required or anything, but like... If you want to have an identity online in the furry community, you have to create your own character to represent you. Yeah. Ugh. God, she's so stereotypical in this. Ugh. Um. Contact and graph. They don't know how to write characters, so they just do this. Nope. There's actually a really good interview with them online. Um, you probably just look up Pontac and Pontac and Graph interview. Uh. And the, the uh, interviewers are very fair to them, but they get into some really good uh, discussions on what they've done with the Sonic games and 
like the fact that they never played any before they were hired on to create these the dialogue for these games um, that's one of the reasons people hate the modern games so much is because Pontac and Graf, the people who write for these, don't understand Sonic. And I don't know, I, I guess it's okay that they don't, they just created their own thing. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of become the canon now, but uh, that's one of the reasons the old bags for Sonic, uh, <laughs> if you want to use that term. I love that term. It's a great term. Because um, it's not actually like insulting it's actually an endearing thing <laughs> well here's yeah. here's the weird thing a lot of that kind of terminology started with the the image boards yeah four chan and stuff um and they're so irreverent especially towards each other yep. that everyone and everything is a fag some sort of fag yeah yeah so now with their fucked up terminology it's basically uh if you are associated with something you are whatever fag right so there are it started with insults like fur fag was originally an insult yeah and then it's like, oh, good, you're new here, fucking new fag. Uh -huh. and it's like, well, you're such an elitist old fag. Yeah, exactly. And then eventually just evolved into like, yeah, I'm, I'm this fag or I'm that fag. And yep. Just whatever. But yeah, the, the Sonic old fags um, hate Pontac and Graf because of what they did with the series. And it's, it's really interesting to hear from both sides, including, um, I think it was just Pontac they interviewed, not Graf himself. But uh, it's really interesting hearing his perspective because he knows what he's doing. It just he does not care about that old fandom at all. Yeah. Well, with writing, um, especially when you're writing established characters, mm -hmm. there's kind of two. Ah, damn it. Oops. There's pretty much two ways you can go about doing it. You can either get a fan to write it, and then you run the risk of. Uh, Flanderizing. Yeah, getting really cringeworthy stuff. Yep. Um, or you can go the complete opposite direction and get somebody who doesn't know the characters. Uh -huh. But then you run the risk of them not understanding why the characters are popular in the first place and what yep. resonates with people. Exactly, yeah. Um, personally, I think the best way to go about doing it is this like next to impossible thing to actually intentionally accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that's get somebody who is unfamiliar with the characters and doesn't have that baggage of being a fan to come with them. But then they do their research. Yeah, and understand what the original draw of the character was in the first place. Yeah. And that takes a certain kind of mindset to understand that. Yeah, it, that's definitely not the norm. Because mm -hmm. you get your Pontax and your Rats who willfully don't get the characters. Yes. Um, and have no interest in getting the characters. And, and just, then you get Slayer's Revolution on the other end. Yeah, where it's clearly written by fans, and it's so up its own ass, and so full of, like, fan nods and fan references and fan jokes. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm sure a lot of bronies can relate to this with later seasons of My Little Pony, where they oh. start to acknowledge yeah. the brony community. Yep. Um, the reason I stopped watching the show. <laughs> yeah, kind of the same boat for me. Yeah. Um, where it's like, some nods are okay. Mm -hmm. Pandering is always bad. Yes. I don't know. Sometimes there's some pandering that's intentionally bad, like a, like a yeah, we know what we're doing, haha. -ha. Right. It, it's a wink and a nod sort of pandering. Yeah, but you can't you can't hang your hat on that. Right. You kind of have to very very delicately balance that. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Um. Oh, my mistake. It was Sky Sanctuary, not Angel Island. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which looks a lot better. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, I just realized they use the same voice clip for this as they do Smash Brothers Sonic. That doesn't surprise me. Wow, the, the frame rate just... <laughs> the weird thing is, uh, I have the frame rate on for Bandicam. You can't see it because it doesn't record that. Yeah. Um, but the frame rate didn't dip there, which meant that was entirely in-engine. Huh. That, that wasn't the, my processing power. That's weird. That is weird. What the fuck is up with you, Sega and computers? <laughs> I don't think they understand things. No, I don't think they understand how computers work. Yep. What's weird is, it's only with the Sonic games that I have to deal with this. Like, I have the Sonic All-Star Racing game, and that runs just fine. There's no issues with that. Hmm. So you mean the mainline Sonic games? Yeah. Okay. So weird. Fuck you. Fuck you. I feel like there was something we're missing, talking about the furry community. Um... 
we didn't get into the drama, we didn't get into the politics, and we barely touched on the on the commission prices because we got distracted. Yeah. Because this is a let's play, so of course we're getting distracted. Right, of course. Um, I think one of the things about the drama... Yeah. Um, like, you hear about furry drama all the time, and yes, it exists. Um, I think a lot of it is because a large portion of the fandom is little kids or teenagers. Yeah. And so they're prone to that sort of thing. So then you get a whole bunch of people doing that, and then various other people jump on that bandwagon because we're social creatures, and it just kind of spirals out of control. Yeah. Like, people get really butthurt about very little things a lot of the time. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, sure, nice why not? Um, well, I think part of the problem is a lack of communication. Yeah. Because a lot of times what happens is... Um, Somebody will say something, and it's their side of the story. And because this is the internet, and because we're so used to instant gratification, uh, uh, a whole bunch of people, especially their friends, will take it as the gospel truth. Yeah. And it's not always the the fault of the people telling the story, because, you know, we are creatures of perspective. Right. We this are. This is what I saw, and it looks really bad from my perspective. Um, or somebody puts an in joke into art, and people don't know the context of it and will right. misinterpret it. Yep, that's true. Or the people who make the in-joke don't realize what that looks like. Mm -hmm. The people not aware of the in-joke. So there, there's a lot of miscommunication that goes on there. Or people will say things. Um, a lot of times things are said in jest that other people do not take as a joke. Yeah. Which it's very hard to say who's at fault, if anyone, in those kind of situations. Yep. Because you also don't know where the person getting offended is coming from. Mm -hmm. Like, they could have some kind of history with that. Right. And some people say, well, it's not the fault of the person making the joke. And it's like, oh, depends on what you made the joke on. Yeah. And if you knew. Yeah, if you knew, if the subject was contentious. Oh, you dillweed. Oh, okay. Whatever. Yeah. Um. I mean, if the subject's contentious, you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. Because if there's going to be a backlash, you just have to know how to handle that backlash. Which a lot of people don't. They, they do the joke, and then they try to say, well, I've got free speech. Well, no, duh. But yeah, you, know, you need to know that this is coming. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. You made the well, joke to ruffle feathers. Yeah, and on top of that, th this is something that bugs me about people who use free speech as a defense. It's mm -hmm. like... Yeah, but you can't use your free speech to stifle my spe free speech. Right, exactly. You have all the right in the world to say this, and I have all the right in the world to criticize you for saying that. Exactly, yeah. Because it's not censorship if I have no power to make you stop on yeah. a legal or authoritative level. Yeah. I'm telling you you're being a shit, and it's well within my rights to tell you you're being a shit. Mm -hmm. And you have every right to block me, because that's just something that happens on these websites. Yeah, um... And people don't get that. And that's one of the yeah. things that cause drama. Mm -hmm. um, 